What's going on, everyone? It's Deirdre, and welcome back to the Moms Off the Clock podcast, a podcast for the moms who need to have a WTF is happening moment. You are not alone. It's so good to be back, and we are back on YouTube. What's going on? <laughs> so excited about our YouTube channel. If you're not listening to the podcast, you need to be watching the visual. That way you can see like my hand gestures or my movements, you know, all this stuff. Have a good time, right? Um, but I'm super excited about this episode. I know last episode was a little heavy, um, very hard to hear, but that was a raw truth coming from a mother, right? And if you haven't heard that one, check that one out. It's called A Mother's Thoughts. Um, I talk about the Texas mass shooting and just things I felt during that time. So, you know, check that out if you want to, you know, if it's a little heavy for you, truly, I, I do understand. But this one is a little uh, more fun. OK, uh, but it still might be a little hard to talk about because this topic is based upon the question, can moms really find a work life balance? Let's talk about it. Right. Let's talk about it. Let's see if we really can find a work life balance. Um, so, yeah, that's today's episode. And that's episode 11. We're on 11, guys. 11. Speaking of 11, have you guys started Stranger Things? If you have not seen the last season, I don't want to spoil it for you. But it's good. It's a little scurry. It's a little scurry. Okay, a little jump, a little, ooh, ah, a little bit of that. But it's a good time. So, um, you know, if they want to pay me for that ad, feel free. But anyways, let's get into it. So if you're listening, you know what to do. Clock out and grab your wine, juice, water for the fitness moms or the moms who just need some water, right? Um, Or the coffee for the go-to moms. And let's talk motherhood but first let's get started with our affirmation for the week our first affirmation and our our not our first affirmation but our affirmation for this week is going to be as a mother my dreams needs visions and goals are all valid and important that's big okay i'm just telling you that this is real that affirmation feel it i'm going to even repeat it let me repeat it as a mother my dreams needs visions and goals are all valid and important all right so let's get into it um i came across a tweet that raised the question and this is from the florist her name is like at lee mads va muse okay that's her that's her um twitter name and i'll probably like pop up and show you the tweet on on the the video. This and the tweet said, "Do you think we still have time to pursue all the dreams we had as little girls?" And I really wanted to know if this was true. So that question really made me think, "Do I really have time to pursue the dreams I had as a little girl?" Like <laughs> is it possible for me to still do the things that I wanted to do as a little girl? And I'm going to read you a few answers and then I'm going to tell you my answer. All right. So um, a few people, I posted this question on my Instagram. If you don't follow me out, it's you'll see it on the video, um, my IG handle. But it is Deirdre Brannick at D-E-I-R-D-R-E Brannick, B-R-A-N-I-C-K. And it'll be on the video. I'll put all the information on the video, but here are their answers, right? So I posed the question and I asked them and one lady said, as long as we are still alive, there is still time. Very optimistic, right? Very optimistic. Um, someone said, yes, it's never too late. I just saw an article of an 83 year old getting her BS. Okay. So her bachelor's degree. Someone said, yes, the question is, are our dreams the same or have they been modified to fit our new reality? That's wonderful. That's optimistic and yet reality based. Right. Um, someone said, yes. Or we find out our dreams have changed since then. Uh, someone said a thousand percent. Yes. And someone said very complex question, but I'm going to say no. Hmm. Are there any right or wrong answers? No. Right. Because it is very complex to think about. Right. Because as a mother, you have this mom life that you cannot turn off and then you're going to enter into a work life that you have to be present in. Right. My answer is going to be, yes, you can truly pursue your dreams, your goals, your aspirations and your visions that you had as a little girl. 
I always thought about becoming a radio host or, you know, hosting something where I can talk and speak and motivate others, right? I've always had that dream since a little girl because my dad had a radio show when he was little and I would get up there and I would talk and and I'm this little girl talking on this radio show and that ignited my extroverted self (laughs) to believe that I can go out and do these things that I'm, I'm living in that moment. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm having a good time. Right. And it still made me think, can I truly pursue other dreams as a mom now? And so you all see me do this podcast. You all see me do social media, life coaching, and completing my master's degree in social work. Right. Uh, and yes, it may look easy or like I'm not exhausted, but I very much so am, (laughs) ma'am. Very much so am. I am exhausted. I'm tired. By the end of the night when my head hits that pillow, baby, I'm out. Okay. I'm 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 out the game, coach. I truly have clocked out because I'm I'm drained. And so some of those that was my phone that never life never stops, guys. Um and so being a mother, wife, a friend, a daughter, etc. is a lot. So the question is, can I now incorporate a job in this equation? So just a little backstory. I'm working on my master's and I had to go through my last internship in August, right? So my beautiful baby, Layla, shout out to my baby. I'll always shout her out because that's my baby. Um, She is going to be going to daycare in August and I am woo, going through the motions, right? Going through that motions. Um, and I'm going to see if I can really dedicate myself because I have to work full time at this internship, how it's going to go um, with me being a full time mom. And because, you know, like when I say full time mom, that's because we don't stop. Right. We don't stop. Let me just emphasize that. And then doing this job full time. But I get to clock out. Right. Um, so it's going to be hard. Will I be able to obtain that? I don't know, but we will see on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. Uh, I start back to work and I'm I'm just trying to get my mind together. So lately I've been mimicking my work schedule so she can wake up, you know, at a certain time that I'm really going to be leaving the house. Is that hard? Yes, because you know you want to sleep in and stay at home moms. You know you want to sleep in. But I'm like, we have to prepare and get, I have to get my mind right to actually get back into that work field. Because as a stay at home mom, sometimes you can uh, let yourself go and, and just chill out. And, and I have Mondays off where I just chill out and, and do things for myself. Um, Baby, I will be at work on Mondays, you know, so I'm trying to enjoy this while I can. But at the same time, I need to start this now, start this habit and building uh, a plan. Right. And to make sure that I'm executing this plan and to see if it actually works. Right. So um, I actually go to work, work, social media from nine to four. Right. So that's actually a day of work. And, and people might, you know, give influencers a bad, uh, a bad, um, you know, that's mom brain. Sorry. They may give, they may give influencers a bad name, a bad rep, right? However, being an influencer is tiring. Okay. It is tiring. We're, we're batch contenting, which means we're like, putting together things in one day. That's why you'll see some of my, my, my videos I have on one outfit and it's like seven videos. Cause I'm, I'm batch planning. Like I'm just batching it all together so I can put it out at different times to see what thrives, what does not. Um, and, and basically, so I'm not tied down to making a reel every hour. I have things in, in my drafts that I can just push out. So being a content uh, creator is, is almost like a full-time job, right? So I, dedicate that time to working to tending to my daughter and to cleaning up around the house from nine to four so that's a job by itself okay if you don't believe me you try it okay it's a lot so (laughs) so yeah so I I do that from nine to four and at four o'clock I have an alarm that just shuts everything off um and it, it, it tells me it's time to clock out it's time to do your thing you gotta go And then that gives me time to be with my family. That way, as long as I mentally get that mindset, I know that when I come home, I'm going to say, hey, I'm leaving work behind because I'm going to dedicate this time to my family. Right. And I also want to one thing I want to negotiate and and not even negotiate, but implement 
as I talk to the people I'll be working with is that my family will always come first and I have a baby, right? So if I have to leave, I do, I apologize, but I will try to make that time back up later on throughout the week, right? So it's hard. It's hard. It's not easy, but it is, it's worth it for one, because this is a dream of mine that I have to finish and become a school social worker or work in the hospital as a social worker, right? And so there's a, there's so many steps to, to doing it, but I know that that's my dream. I want to do that. And as a mom, I still want to make sure that I have my dream, but I'm still dedicating time to my child and making sure that my child still knows that she exists, that she's still here, that she's still loved, that she's still tended to and cared for, right? And I know my, my child's a baby, once again, yes, but it's good to implement these habits now as a child, as an infant, rather than me saying like, I'm going to become a workaholic and I'm just going for success and I can't find that balance in my life to take care of my children, attend their games, attend their, you know, whatever they might do or whoever they might become, right? So just making sure that you implement that for your employer too. Like, hey, this is a one of my amazing dreams of working here, right? I would love to build here and grow here, but I just need you to know I am a mother and that takes precedence over everything right so yeah that's that's another thing I'm, I'm just working on too and making sure I'm kind of implementing that schedule um being present pre- being being present preparing for what to say to my employer and also just making sure that I'm, I'm giving to myself and in fueling myself as a mother that I can take on this job right so it's <laughs> It's very complex, you know, you want to become a mom and you want to be like that top tier person at your job. Can you hand in hand do that? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, depending on what job per se you have, right? If I was in corporate America and they were like, you got to be on the clock all the time, would I be able to do that, pursue that dream, right? As a mother and do that, I don't think I would be able to do that. I don't, I don't think that I would be able to do that, but if, but can, can someone do that? Yes. Because you know why there are mothers out there doing that now. So can you find a work-life balance as a mom? Yes, you can, but it takes a few tools. Okay. And so I'm just going to tell you what I've been doing to prepare for that. Okay. So, I, cause I don't want you to listen to this and feel like, what's the point? You know, what's the point of me working? I might just become a stay at home mom or what's the point of me really pursuing a dream that I want because I don't think I have time for that as a mom. So let's just talk about a few things that um, have helped me so far and that I'm going to be moving forward. I'm going to check back in with this topic in August, maybe September because that'll give me some time to work in the field and know how I'm feeling, right? Maybe. So I'm gonna come back in September. Let me bookmark that, okay? I'm gonna bookmark that and come back in September. So getting back to it, the tools that I will share with you, number one, get a planner. Behind me, I have, and I say behind me because I'm on the camera, guys. So if you're not watching it, (laughs) watch it. YouTube, mom's off the clock. Anyway, (laughs) behind me on my desk, I have this huge planner. It's like a happy planner. And if you guys don't know, Happy Planners, they have a lot of sales. So if you want a planner, check out Happy Planner because you can put stuff back in in your uh, planner, like inserts um, and pages back in your planner that you can write over um, and and just put it back in your planner. That's that's one of the main things I like about Happy Planner. But I have one of those. It's a it's a Happy Planner dupe. Okay, because some of those planners are a little expensive. And I was like, I need to go to Amazon and see if I can (laughs) find something like it. So get a planner, but most importantly, stay dedicated to it. I use my phone to write out my appointments first, and then I transfer that to the book, to my planner behind me. And that planner stays open on my desk, so I can always come back to it and see what's due. As a student, I make sure I write all my assignments out. As a mother, I make sure I write all my appointments out for Layla Uh, or for even myself. And then as a wife, I make sure I plan out everything for my husband's schedule, um, when he flies or not and stuff like that, all that stuff, right? So that's number one. Number two, formulate a plan now for daycare. And the reason I say that is because some daycares have wait lists. If I didn't call um, two weeks ago, I would have never known that I need to actually put my baby on the daycare waiting list now because they ask for that 30 days in advance. So like 
wow, if I would have waited until August, I would have just been stressed. Okay, so make sure you call the daycares uh, immediately when you know, just so you know, okay, when, when should I start or how long is the waiting list? Will I be able to have my child in time? Um, I mean, excuse me, enrolled in time before I start back to work. So that's another thing. Make sure you have that. Okay. Number three, start the daycare a week or two in advance before you start week, um, excuse me, before you start work. That way you can see how your little one adjusts to the daycare. And if your baby gets sick, you can still tend to your baby throughout that week that you're not working. Okay. Hear me out because babies do get sick. And they always say when the babies get sick, whatever they give you puts you down as well. So I'm just telling you that their sickness as a little infant is a little bit stronger. I don't know why, but that that's that's what a lot of parents tell me. So make sure you can like start start your baby going to that daycare two weeks in advance. So then that way you can go and check on your baby too, see how she's doing. Or if they have cameras, you can watch some of the pictures and see how they're they're doing there. Or you can call and ask. You'll have time to do those things, right? To see how they adjust. Start them start them a little sooner, not when you go right to work because it's going to be hard trying to get them to adjust to that while you're starting a new job because then you're, hey, I got to go. So try a little bit earlier, okay? That's that's another pro tip, right? Number th- uh, four, we're on four, right? Number four, talk to your spouse about how they will help as well because we all know, okay, that when a baby gets sick, Who do they call first and who has to leave their job majority of the time? The mother. I don't know if you guys watch Working Moms on Netflix. This is another, you know, little shout out. Watch Working Moms if you're becoming a mother or you want to become a mom. That show, I watched that that show in depth, okay? Because it was humorous. It was fun. It was a plot twist. It was great. But it also shows you motherhood in its in its beautiful light, right? So watch Working Moms. But they show you a lot of times that the moms are the ones on call and they had wonderful and desirable careers, but they also had to leave. Um, and there was days that they had to drop what they were doing to pick up their children because the dads were like, yeah, no, I'm at work, right? So just remember that. Remember that, okay? So talk to your spouse, Hey, let's alternate. If she, he or she gets sick, I'll pick them up this time. But the next time, can you please pick them up? Because I'm really trying to be dedicated to this new job, this new dream, this new vision, this new goal. And, and you know, if you don't have an active uh, co-parent or a partner, um, ask someone like a friend or a grandparent or a godparent, someone that you know is very tr- like loyal and someone you can trust uh, th- and explain to them your situation. Like, hey, I'm trying to do something new. I- I'm going to need all hands on deck. And um, yeah, make sure that person, like I said, is, is reliable. OK, um, if you don't have a trusted partner or a partner that you can kind of lean on for that. Uh, specific circumstance all right and uh, the last thing number five keep trying do not give up okay if it doesn't work the first time go back to the drawing board and formulate a new plan keep showing up always know that your goals your dreams and your visions they do matter even as a mother you are an individual first before you are a mother Okay, and those dreams that you had before you were a mother, they still matter. Don't give up on those things because it gets a little challenging because motherhood is challenging. Right. But there are ways to maneuver around this and make make things happen for you. Right. Um, And don't let motherhood discourage who you are uh, individually. There are moms doing it and they're doing it well. Be inspired by these amazing moms and women, but also show yourself grace and don't compare yourself to them. Don't beat yourself up and say, oh, well, they can do all this and I can't even do this sometimes it might be a little challenging for other people because you might have moms who are still dealing with postpartum um uh, effects right such as depression anxiety there it might be harder for them so don't cast judgment on that mother and don't cast judgment on yourself right your journey is your journey don't shame others for their dreams and don't shame or guilt yourself out of talking your way out of your dream right don't do that just keep showing up Keep going back to that drawing board. If plan A doesn't work, you got a plan B. If plan B doesn't work, keep going for plan C. But either way, get to that goal. Get to that desire. Can you find a work-life balance as a mom? The answer is yes. 
The answer is yes. And if your desire is not to be a work, a working mom, and it's just to be the stay at home mom, then do that. Do that wonderfully. And you and, and thrive in that, right? But the question that we're talking about today is can you find a work life balance? And the answer is yes. Just make sure you have support, have your village, and use the tools you need to uh, plan and stay organized because you're going to need it. All right. But you can do this. I have faith in you. And I'm so excited about this because you're going to go forward and you're going to message me. Um, on my Instagram at Dear Jabranic, right? And you're going to be like, hey, listen, I started something new and I'm doing pretty well. This is week three and da 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 da. And then it's, we're going we're gonna to both like celebrate and I'm going to toast with my water. Um, and I'm, because I'm trying to do better with not drinking wine. And we're going to just be happy. Okay. <laughs> That's what we're going to do because you can do this. Don't get discouraged. Even if you are, are you want to be a mom. And you're doing very well in your work, your workplace and, and you're getting promoted and things like that. Don't think that you have to stop doing that because you become a mom, right? Use those tools that I gave you. Use your village. Ask for help. Okay. You got this. You're a beautiful being. You're a beautiful mom. And as you get ready to clock back in, know that you're doing your best. Okay. It's not about being perfect. <laughs> it's about being progressive. Until next time, mamas. See you soon and let me go check on my baby. <laughs>